Hello, and welcome to this round table, introducing the next generation imaging system from Philips to discuss how smart CT can transform your IR suite by bringing the 3D lab into the lab and making it a clinical reality. I'm Constantino Pena from the Miami Cardiac and Vascular Institute, and I have with me Professor Mark Sapoval from Paris, France, as well as Professor Kolbeiter from Paris. And they're the two very early users with this new system. We're looking forward to having this in the United States soon, but I think it's important for us to learn from their initial experience using smart CT and to see how and gain insight from their experiences and really ask the question, what's the importance of having 3D imaging into our IR suite? And what are the hurdles in using it routinely? With that, I'd like to start with the first question. And I'd like to ask Dr. Sapoval. Dr. Sapoval, how long have you had the smart CT system? And how was the transition going to this new Azurian with smart CT? We were uh, very, very uh, impressed, I would say, by the, uh, the ease of adoption in the whole team. Uh, we, are, we are six uh, full-time IRs in the, in the team, and we have uh, four residents and two fellows. So uh, it's a relatively large team, and the adoption of new technology is always a challenge. So it has been really very, very successful. And... Uh, the learning curve is quite uh, quite uh, short, I would say. Great. Dr. Kolbeiter, how was your transition? Was that similar to Dr. Sapoval's? Well, our transition was, I would say, it's almost the same as, uh, as Mark Sapoval. We have this system since July uh, 2020, uh, and we are already uh, large users of 3D imaging uh, since a long time for many more than 10 years and we are also Philips users for more than 10 years. So the transition was say quite easy, but it probably more easy for young who just started with this new system. They found it much more easy to start with than like an old guy like me who's been using the old system uh, and have to jump into another system. But I find myself now more and more, much more comfortable to be in this new Azurian room uh, with the smart city than I used to be with uh, 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 old systems of clarity, uh, Allura FD20. Great. So, you know, we talk about bringing the 3D capabilities to the table side. Specifically, could you give us some idea what kind of improvements and what, what is being brought to the table side with the smart CT system? Dr. Sapoval. So I think uh, in, in the... Uh... I would say old days, and I am not like Hisham, a, a long-term user of uh, the Philips rooms in general, because our room was installed one year ago and Smart City a, a few months ago. So we are relatively early uh, and young users of the overall Philips environment. Uh, despite this, I think uh, the the uh, Smart City allows uh, to really take all the different steps uh, that you need to do appropriate 3D imaging uh, without leaving the lab and without uh, needing to uh, change and to come back and change gloves and do the manipulation in the control room or try to communicate with the technicians, please do this and do that. Uh, we do everything on our own. Doesn't mean that the technicians do not play a role, and I, I know that we'll come back to this point a little later, uh, but really it brings uh, you the opportunity to play with the volume to do the cut and, the, uh, and different uh, changes that you like to uh, uh, manipulate the images to make sure you get the, the most out of it. So I think it's very, very convenient and very useful. It has really changed the way we, we do the things. Great. Thank you, Dr. Kolbeiter. Have you had a similar experience or how has your experience been in terms of what have you been able to do now table side with the smart CT? 
this setting, I will not go back on Romark setting. We have all the capacity to control uh, which type of uh, uh, run you want. If it's uh, a 2D, it's a 3D, it's a, is it a can be or is it a 3D? You could choose everything by the TSM, which is just nearby you. But also, you could also have the experience to teach the other the other who are outside of the room so it's a, uh, because you control everything from inside or outside of the room which is quite convenient because if you have new technicians or your fellows you could they can also see all the things that you are doing uh, live by just but you are um, leading what what everything happens so uh, this way you can teach new text or old text how to to manipulate uh, uh, the the room at the same time you could control so you don't have to ask everybody yeah do this move this uh, no not this button the other button or change gloves or come back so it it makes it, if you are experienced with that you can control anytime you want you can take over every everything on uh, the TSM with just near you uh, at uh, at the table. So it sounds that you really, both of you shown some great examples of how it affects the workflow and has made the workflow much more efficient by being in the room. And both of you have mentioned the importance of learning curve. And I'd like to touch the, upon this because you know we have two different users here, someone who's new to the Philips uh, systems and one who's been doing it for a while. And you know, a lot of times we worry about new technology. You may get a new technology and if, if the learning curve is too difficult, you may not it doesn't grow with the system. You end up using it once or twice and it doesn't become part of what you normally use. I mean, I mean, great examples so far about getting the whole team involved. Do you see a lot of obstacles in terms of the workflow with the learning curve? And is this something that you think after two or three cases, people are, are eager and ready to use it and are prepared in every case to use that? I'll start with Dr. Savalbaum. I'm curious to hear your answer. So it's like always with these type of tools, you have level one and you have level two. Uh, so I would say level two is the super expert and level one is the uh, average user. So with this uh, interface and with this setting, I think you can really reach level one uh, after very few cases, maybe less than 10 cases. Uh, if you make some concentration, some efforts to make sure you take your time to understand everything. And if you're appropriately uh, trained and self-training is also very easy here and transmission from one uh, uh, IR to the other is also very easy. So I think reaching level one or step one is very, very easy. And, uh, and I think much better than what I used to uh, see with other uh, uh, manufacturers or other uh, uh, software environment. Thank you very much. Dr. Kohlweider, do you have had a similar experience? Uh, yeah, totally. The, the smart city, it's much more easy to handle. It's really, and you could add also uh, instructions. You could insert instructions uh, in the software to, to teach people how to do the setup. You can have everything prepared. This need work. You need to work with your text. And it's very important to have the text involved very early to get them involved in how to set up the room, how to enter all the data that you want in. And it could be personalized. Like if uh, it's like you want to have this protocol because you work like this and other of your colleagues don't work like you. So you can have your own setup. It's say, say it's, I want this type of protocol, this type of injection, this type of setting, having my patient here, my table here, my CR right here. So it, it needs some work before, but once it's done, it could be like personalized. So Dr. Kohlbeiter, I, I totally agree and hear from what you're saying, how by affecting and having personalized protocols, you can affect workflow. We continue to be able to treat patients with multitude of different operators and being able to kind of have it personalized for that particular operator in that particular case. That sounds like it would be a, a, a significant workflow advantage. But at the end of the day, we're really trying to help our patients and trying to see that this technology will also have an impact on the way we treat our patients. And I'm curious, after having this um, machine installed and, and being able to use it, do you already have some examples, some clinical 
uh, scenarios where you saw a definite advantage that you were able to perform a 3D that you wouldn't have done uh, if it wasn't table side. I'd like to start with Dr. Sabalom. So to my opinion, uh, PA is the winner here. The, the, the way we do PA now has changed and we do uh, uh, CBCT at the beginning of the intervention and we always try to uh, uh, do the uh, appropriate uh, fusion imaging with a 3D volume to find the appropriate projection to uh, uh, unmask the ostium of the prostatic artery. Uh, so for us, it's uh, now it's really routine. Um, and this is really something which used to be much more cumbersome. Uh, we could do it, but it would require much more efforts. And also it would require that the appropriate texts are in the room because we have great texts, but they are not also familiar with post-processing and manipulation of the uh, workstation. So if you are a lucky guy and you're with a great text, then that's fine. If you're not, uh, it's a bad day. Uh, it would be a concern. So with this approach, uh, with Smart City, there is not this concern anymore. You can do everything on your own, and it's very useful. Great. Dr. Kohlbeiter, any examples that you've seen it, how it affects that patient care? If you have, don't have the good text at 2 o'clock in the morning and you still need to do a Conbeam CT for, I don't know, for to search for a bleeding or something like that that you cannot see on the standard DSA, well, you can do it because you can take the control uh, of the room inside. And what we've seen also for the COVID that uh, since we don't want to have people going uh, uh, in and out of the room because we close all the room and you have only one way to go in, one way to go out. This way, once you're at the, the table, you could do all the manipulation, all what you want. Whoever have a COVID patient, we try to go immediately to the room uh, that have the smart cities because we know that in, once we step in, we don't need to go out. Thank you very much. It sounds like I uh, really heard some great experiences and straight examples of not only the table side control, but the ability to perform these studies when, when you want them and no longer having that obstacle or barrier just because it's table side. You no longer need to worry about the technologists. Are they comfortable or is everything set? And it sounds like when you want to acquire something like a comb beam CT, you're prepared to do that. And I'm, I'm, it's great to see, uh, Dr. Sapo, have you seen that, you know, it's affected now how you do these procedures, very complex procedures, very time consuming procedures, being able to really save time and effort by using this type of technology. I, I wanna touch on a point that Dr. Kohlbeiter talked about, and that is, you know, we're now in the COVID-19 pandemic, and that's really changed our workflow. And you're exactly right. This now more than ever, once you get in the room, you wear your gloves, you want to minimize the times you come in and out, the things are in the room. Uh, that, that's a great example and one that you know, we're living every day. Where do you think things will evolve with this type of table side 3D technology and the smart CT? Where do you see and how do you think things may affect your practice a year from now? Dr. Kohlbeiner. Well, uh, I can say probably it will make people more keen to use it and much, do it much more easier and much more frequently. Uh, I, I think we should like in the future, probably a 3D imaging in, in CAT labs will become a standard uh, uh, image acquisition like we do a DSA run. At least we are aiming for that. It's like if you, it should not be, it should not stay like now. If like, if you want to do a 3D run, it's like, Wow, we should go for a 3D run. What should I do? So it should be like, okay, I do a 3D run or I do a DSA. It is the same. Uh, it's only, is, or I think it's gonna be the trend in the future to be much more 3D imaging than 2D and DSA runs. Uh, because we all know that uh, whenever we don't do a 3D run in some procedure say, oh, I should have done a 3D run and we are not happy saying, well, I didn't do all the setup to do a 3D run. So I think doing, having this much more easier will make people go much more for this new imaging. Dr. Sabalo, anything you want to add about the future direction? Well, I would, I would, uh, I would enhance what, uh, what Professor Kobaita said about the routine use of 3D. 
and uh, 3D starts at the acquisition level. And now setting up the room is much easier, it's much faster. And as you may know, we can now have the uh, uh, rotation in five seconds when you put the C-arm on the lateral aspect, which is really, really fast. Uh, and because you can manage everything from the, the table side, the only thing the text needs to do is come and, and put the arms where they need to be to make sure uh, there is no obstacle in the uh, mechanical uh, rotation of the C-arm. But then it makes really a much easier process to get these images uh, uh, ready for you to use. And also, I think that there are a lot of uh, new avenues <clears throat> like uh, guidance or fusion or, or even some, uh, I would say, functional assessment of what we're doing, which today we, we are relatively lacking in our, in our daily practice in Angio. Uh, I think these are very, very important points to work on for the future. Well, thank you very much. You know, I think just hearing about all this excitement in terms of workflow benefits, being able to really now uh, not have a barrier to use 3D imaging just because it's table side, being able to be a uh, better use of our resources and more efficient, uh, all these advantages that these two experts have really explained to me really makes me look, look forward to the day Smart CT comes to uh, the United States. And um, I'd like to thank both Dr. Sapoval and Dr. Kolbeider for sharing their experiences with us. And uh, I want to share the viewer and thank the viewer for uh, sharing their time with us. And hopefully we'll see each other at a meeting or sometime uh, not virtual in the future. All right, everyone. Thank you very much and stay safe.